Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at an 8 inch tablet, but not your typical tablet. This is going to be the Nvidia Shield tablet, a product that I wanted to review for a very long time. And is this thing still worth getting in 2022? Normally I'm always buying like say 10 inch tablets, but this particular version is quite interesting. It comes with the Nvidia Tegra K1 mobile processor, 16 gigabyte of storage space, but we do have a very nice 8 inch full HD LCD or better set an IPS panel. 2 gigabytes of RAM and the 16 gigabyte story is not a lot and I must say it's pretty damn cool that you can basically upgrade this with a micro SD card. So when it comes to Android devices the Nvidia Shield is absolutely an amazing piece of hardware but that is also one of the reasons I want to have the tablet. The specifications are not similar so far I understand when you're looking at the Nvidia Shield let's say full Android devices but the specification wise for an older tablet can be interesting for gaming as are other features. <laughs> but when you're looking at the Nvidia Shield portable device, I must say you do have some awesome features compared with the Shield tablet. The portable is just super expensive and more like a fun novelty to have now in your collection, especially when you're looking at the specs, for example the Android version this Shield portable is running on. But nevertheless, the Nvidia Shield portable does come in different models, and what I understand of this is one of the latest ones they released back in the day. This thing comes with 2 times 5 megapixel camera and nowadays when you're looking at mobile phones or tablets it's not something very fancy. So still curious what are we going to get and can you use it for let's say making pictures and just some other things. Because this thing does have a very convenient thing of holding it in your hand. The thing that I really love about the Nvidia Shield tablet because of the 8 inch format and the 8 inch format will give you more comfortable let's say holding it in your hand for a long time. Also the weight is different and of course it's not that big to hold. So when you're looking at the back over here we do get this rubber compound, not the biggest fan of this. So at the back we do get ourselves the first camera over here, it's the megapixel one that I already like shown you on the box itself. But 5 megapixel at the back but also we're going to get a 5 megapixel at the front. So let's take a quick look at the quality there. Okay, so when you're looking at the quality and overall, it's not bad at all for a 5 megapixel camera. Of course, this is one of those features in tablets, in my opinion, they don't really pay a lot of attention to. So let's go to the next part of it. So we're going to record some, let's say, plants. I just wanted to give you like a different kind of color aspect ratio, but also like when moving a little bit. Let's give it a close up. And I must say, when you just want to make a quick video, just in nothing fancy or you just want to have a picture for something taken, I think the overall quality of the camera is not bad at all. Take a consideration that these tablets are nowadays new super expensive. And not to forget also, they are quite old. But that's the quality of the camera. So when you're looking at the here, we do have like the stylus pen, a very cool option that you have with this device. Here you can see like it's already booting up and you just want to mess around with it, like swipe it, don't want to use your finger. It's super convenient and I really like the quality of the pen. So that's just a very cool feature you don't see with tablets nowadays. Maybe if you have like a Samsung Note or something or maybe a very expensive tablet that is specially made for like say drawing, you do have like Let's say the pen, but now we do get it inside of the Nvidia Shield itself. Okay, but let's take a close look at the specification list. For example, we can open up IDA64 where we can take a close look at the spec list in general and what are we going to get. But let's do a little bit of a nerdy talk and wicked nerdy talk and let's take a close look at the specification. We did talk about it a little bit now, but I just want to take a close look in depth of it. When you're looking at the specification list, it's not like the most powerful device out there. There are so many maybe better options, but what you're going to get is not bad at all. And later on we'll do some testing with gaming and also emulation. It does come with a beautiful display with a 12 on by 912 resolution. And that on an 8 inch screen size. Absolutely crazy, 60 hertz refresh rate. The battery is 5100 milliamp. But IDA64 does show that my battery condition is basically like that. Don't know how this is actually like translating in the condition. I can still use this thing with emulation for an hour or so. But I think in general it was normally better when this thing has like a brand new battery inside. Okay, so we're looking at the device in general specification. It's not like supreme like nowadays. We have like so many specifications that are way better now. But in general, like what you can do with it is quite interesting. We can even play some emulators on this thing that we're going to test out very briefly in this video because I want to do an in-depth video in the future about that. And we also can play some Android games like Mario Run. I think it's pretty cool and we have like a lot of cool features that we can play on this device. Super Mario! Yeah. 
but how about the audio quality because this is always like a general problem with these tablets depending of course what you're buying and how much you're paying but when you're looking at this 8 inch model the audio quality itself it's very nice and i personally really like it What I personally really love to do on this tablet is also like watching some Netflix on it simply because it's just amazing like how everything works. It's an 8 inch model, it got some amazing sound on board so also if you want to plug in a headphone that is no problem whatsoever. And that is just one of those features I personally really love about it. This thing comes with a beautiful IPS panel and it looks amazing if you want to watch some animes or some other movies or television series. And let's take a close look at all the other functions. We do have like a volume control over here. I also call it the volume rocker on and off switch. Then we do have like this tiny valve that we can remove or find tiny plastic bed, I said. And yeah, there we go. And here we can enter the micro SD card for expanding the internal memory. And over here we do get ourselves the mini HDMI that we're going to try out because I think it's a very cool feature. Basically we can turn this thing into a game machine. Then we have like the micro USB for charging and we even have, it seems to be like a jack out. Something is pretty damn cool and not regular anymore. And let's say when you're looking at a lot of devices, think about your mobile phone. But again, very happy to have it so you can implement yourself a headphone and listen to some music. But let's take a look at the gaming capabilities or better said emulation abilities because this is pretty damn cool with this device. It's not like the best tablet you can get. So you can get yourself like the Nvidia Shield controller or just get a different brand. Alright, so let's try some PlayStation 1. We do have like so many devices nowadays that can play PlayStation 1 without any problem. Another system runs pretty damn good on this is with the Dream Emulator and of course some Soul Calibur from the Dreamcast. Let's boot it up. And let's have some fun. But the maximum settings I can have with the Sega Dreamcast and the Dream Emulator is the following resolution, the 1920 by 1440. So the next test I want to mess around with some PlayStation Portable. You will see some minor hiccups down here and there. And overall when you're looking at the overall performance with some games, it's going to be like a mixed bag. But overall, when you're looking at like Tekken 6, we do have some amazing performance here. But it dips down 55, 58 FPS. Okay, so next up, let's try some God of War. We did mess around with the buffering settings. The end result is not great. Frame skip set to 1. And you can see, like, it's not looking great. Here in quick view, when we're going to put the buffer settings on. And here you can see that we're going to get even more frame ups and it looks like a little bit better but then absolutely like unplayable up to 22 frames per second so i think it's a pretty damn cool all-round device eight inch a very nice format to hold to watch some videos to listen to some music and the features are absolutely amazing but the next thing i wanted to try with this was the next thing and that was like the hdmi because what you can do with this combined with the controller you can plug it into a television and make this thing like an android box or an nvidia shield box so if you're going to bring this thing with you can you use it like in game beast on a tunnel version when plugging in the device itself we do have the option for console mode which you can see over here and the mirror mode let's choose mirror mode because basically what you're going to get you're going to get the projection from the tablet on your television. In this case, we can use this thing like a game system and just play some games. But if you're choosing the console mode, the next thing that happens is that we're going to get ourselves a different approach. I think the clone mode is pretty damn cool, but this is actually going to have like different features with the console. Here you can see like it's Android starting again, starting all of the applications. And with the NVIDIA games option, what you can do basically is like stream games from the server. And this is pretty damn cool. So you can play a lot of great AAA titles. Take consideration, it's a paid server. So this is absolutely not free. But I think it's just a really cool feature. They can plug in your tablet into your television. Let's say you bring your tablet with you and controller. And you can just have like a gaming console with you. So an awesome feature. 
and just a really extra thing that you're going to get with the Nvidia tablet. The Nvidia Shield, there are absolutely some things I don't like, there are things I do like. But I cannot really complain too much about it, simply because it's an already an older tablet I'm making this video. Beside that point, this thing does give it like a very nice punch when it comes to the performance, when you're looking at the emulation, things that we can do with it. If you're going to pick this thing up for not a lot of money, we can even do some more awesome things that I wanted to do also here on the channel, so consider subscribing, hit that little bell. Nevertheless, let me know in the comments what do you think of the Nvidia Shield, do you ever own it or do you want one? But thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and it will be great to see you in the next video.